Energy storage. It was the missing link that was needed to make renewables a thing. It also has the ability to offer a second and perhaps even a third life to EV batteries that may no longer be useful in electric vehicles, but may have other important applications in an electric vehicle afterlife. And I want to take this a little further because to people who hear the word energy storage, they would immediately think batteries, which when it comes to renewables, it is. Yeah. But would you also realize that a pile of coal sitting out in front of an electric power plant is also energy storage? When I read it, I was surprised. But then, it, yeah, if we get energy from coal, that is a form of energy storage until it's yeah. converted into energy. Yeah. You know, the actual pile of coal is sitting there as storage, ready to be converted. The biggest source of um Energy storage, ironically, is what they call pumped hydro. In other words, water behind a dam. That's good, right? That, In North that America. Pretty, blew my mind. I never thought about it like that. Is that if that is that one of the is that uh, a there, clean source of energy? Then, absolutely. Right? Yeah. It's water. Yeah, it's water. I, I mean, mean, you know, there's energy no, from the water. The water basically water and gravity. Yeah. You pump it up behind a dam, so it's high. You release the water, it flows down. The energy, speed, and strength of the water turns the turbines, which generates electricity. That's crazy. It is. Uh, <laughs> I got a chance to actually be in the dam in Hoover Dam. I've been there too. Did you? Did they let you go down to the level where the, we did before all the craziness? Mm -hmm. So we were there before 9-11. We actually got to the generating floor. Wow. In that thing. That's cool. Do you remember the noise you heard? Yes, yes. They said that is the that is the noise, and they said about how many tons of water moving at five miles an hour. It was incredible noise it, of that water moving. What I was reading here too, when you said uh, adding perhaps um, even a third, uh, you know, life to EV batteries, and I don't mean to get you too far off here, but um, so a lot of people seem to have concerns about batteries that once they're done, that they're. Uh, you know, not good for the environment then, or that they're... Let me be Let me be blunt on that subject. Please, because I've heard that uh, recently. Internal combustion engines at the end of their lives okay. contaminate the ground. You've got antifreeze, oils, all contaminated, heavy metals, um, all a crud. But is it something we need to figure out? Or, but, you know what? Or is this kind it's of an no, answer here? You it, said right here, this may offer, if, once we figure them out better. I'll put it to you this way. When you get 200,000 miles an internal combustion engine, it's done. It's over. Yeah. You can't use it anymore. Nothing. It's going to the scrapyard. You might be able to get some parts off it, and it may lay around for years until it ends up in a shredder, if it gets there at all. Yeah. Meanwhile, depending on where it ended up, may leach all this nastiness into the ground, and God forbid, the water table. Now, let's, now let's talk about EV batteries real yep. quick. EV battery may have one, two, or three different lives. There's the first life of being used in a car. What most people don't realize is both Mercedes, Benz, and Nissan has done considerable research about a second and third life. In fact, Mercedes is actually built a uh, an EV battery plant in an old coal electric generating plant. Nice. Nissan is using... They took a whole city and used repurposed old Nissan Leaf batteries to power streetlights. Long after you couldn't use them in the Leaf, they were still usable. Somebody show me an internal combustion engine that's worn out that's still usable. That's that's the kind of stuff I want to hear. Mic I'm, drop. I'm so glad I asked Mic you drop. that. <laughs> Mike drop somebody. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yep. You know, people want to, well, what about ism? Forget the what about ism. You explain to me how much cleaner an eternal combustion engine is at the end of its life smoking burning oil um and contaminating our atmosphere because it becomes more inefficient as it gets older yep. and the people who own the old engine can't maintain it so it's burning oil it's leaking god knows what into where god knows where yeah and crud and all over the place how many places have you seen old cars leaving oil spots antifreeze trans oh and transmissions too hello we haven't even dealt with all the crud in the transmission when it comes to the end of its life. Greases and all that stuff. Guess what? 18 to 20 moving parts in an electric car. 
The batteries are only one problem. And as this industry continues to grow, there will be more applications. Think about this. Could you possibly use those energy storage systems in a remote situation to uh, store energy for maybe a renewable for a remote battery charging situation for your EV? Can you tell me? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, and maybe they'll figure out how to do this at a personal level where these batteries can be repurposed for home or, yeah, small, that's what I was, yeah. or small campgrounds yeah. or something like that as a renewable power source that will displace, I don't know, diesel generators. Yep. Cool. Again, yeah. there's so many more. And plus, a lot of the metals in an EV battery are reclaimable and recyclable. Somebody wanted to throw out cobalt and everything. And oh, let me back up because I'm on a roll here. <laughs> uh, newsflash if you've been listening to our program, you know that lithium ion batteries are not the only chemistry, battery chemistry being worked on, being developed, which means cobalt. Lithium, which are the two big ones, because they want to talk about cobalt and how it's being mined by children and oppressive regimes and all that. Most companies are trying to get away from cobalt completely. Is it the main one right now? Cobalt and lithium. They're trying to get away from both of them. Yeah. Are they, but they're the main ones right now. Main ones right now. There are other metals that are used in an EV battery. But right now, with all the technology we've talked about. Yep. Yep. That that may be a moot. That may be moot. In as little as two years. Yeah, just have to fit. Yeah, yep. Because they can't deal with the lithium shortage. Because right now, while you can mine lithium in the United States, I believe it's either Peru, in Chile, and China, and they're trying to get away from uh, being dependent on rare earth materials, is what they call them in China, and getting away from that. That makes sense. So do you have a way to segue into our uh, article? No <laughs> Thank way. Thank you. I, I appreciate though. That was really good stuff there. That it is, but. The important thing that we need to realize, because this was brought up, and I took somebody on hmm, social media recently who wanted to go there, you know, and, and accuse much the same way they said, well, you know, uh, the power that uh, recharges an EV battery is dirty, meaning the EV is dirty. No, we've covered that ground, and I'm not going to cover it again. Yeah, no, we will later, maybe, no, but. <laughs> no. All I'm saying is e storage, and, and I'm not going to get a chance to cover it all, but energy storage is any way either thermal, renewable, or chemical that, that energy can be stored. Now, they say that the best way for this to work is that if, if that storage system is what they call bidirectional, that it can take load to be recharged or provide uh, assistance to the grid when needed. Batteries are perfect for that. So is water power. They also talked about other thermal or chemical situations. Coal uh, is one of those, believe it or not, because we still use coal, unfortunately. It's going down, though. It is. And uh, newsflash, nuclear, but we're going to talk about nuclear in a future show because it's about time we told the truth about nuclear. <laughs>